Welcome to South Padre Island, to one of the area's only dedicated sandcastle lesson areas. My name is Andy Hancock, and I'm your sandcastle master for today. Let's build a sandcastle. The first, there's only three rules when you're building a sandcastle. Number one, you only use wet sand, which is this stuff. Nice and sloppy and wet. It can't be too wet. It can only be too dry. Number two, every sandcastle has to be built like a pyramid. Fatter at the base, thinner at the top. It doesn't matter what you're building, a racehorse, a racing car, a sandcastle, it's always the same. And the third part is once you've stacked your wet sand, you always work from the top down. Very, very simple. Three steps, wet sand, pyramid, top down. It's a piece of cake. Okay, let's show you how it's done. Hands in the bucket. Obviously, if you're on the beach, we're gonna show you that later. If you're on the beach, you dig a hole and that hole becomes your bucket, so it's very simple. Okay, put that in there, and you shimmy. You don't need to pat a sandcastle, there's no point. Okay, you just put the sand down and shimmy. You let the water do the work for you. Just shimmy like that. You don't want to build too many pancakes at once, because the other thing you're going to be doing is building staircases. And this is where we jiggle. You see, girls shimmy, boys jiggle, it's really easy. Okay, so. <laughs> We just jiggle like that, keep our hands parallel, keep our thumbs up, go whoo. Okay, like that, and then you can keep those together. And it means that when you're building, you don't have any gaps here. If you put all your pancakes up at once and then all your staircase blocks up at once, you get a gap in the middle and it doesn't make for a good sandcastle. Oh, itchy nose. Right, and then we go up another few steps and we have to refill our bucket. That's the good thing about a beach lesson, is that your bucket doesn't need refilling. It's an unlimited bucket show, okay? And if you are wondering, it takes 65 shovelfuls to fill a barrel. Yeah, you're right, that's a lot of shovelfuls. I did a competition here a few years ago where we had 36 barrels. And somebody, some nice kind person expected me to fill them myself. I don't think so. Right, so we go up a bit further, shimmy again, no patting, okay? You don't have to pat your sandcastle. You see ever so many people patting and banging. The water, as it drains through your castle, is locking all those sand crystals together with a microscopic layer of water. Every time you hit it, you break them. There's no point in smacking your sandcastle. It hasn't done nothing wrong. Have your baby, no. Then, we better make an arch. Everybody wants to make an arch. You just put a separate pile up at the side. Okay, hold it up, nice and wet. If your sand is still, mo still uh, uh, molten, as it were, you can just jiggle it. More jiggling. I think that's what the world needs, more jiggling. Right, and then you use this hand, hello hand, stick it in there and put some wet sand on it. Same theory, you just jiggle it like that. Okay. You don't have to move your hand. If you keep it steady, it actually helps. All right. And you just smear the wet sand like that. Hold your hand in there for a few seconds. And you can just take it out. One of the rules, as we went through before, is pyramid shaped. So when you've done your, built your little bridge, make it thinner at the top than it is at the base. It just means it'll stand up for longer. Okay, now we can carry on. I'm gonna build it up a bit bigger. Just keep stacking these. You can stack as many as you like. You can even make this have a staircase going the other way. So you can add to it. Um, one of the things I find about sand castling that's great is that uh, it's not knowing where to start, it's knowing when to stop. I can go on and on and on and on. In fact, my kids will tell you I do. But uh, <laughs> it's, uh, that's the great thing about it. You can stack one and work on it all day long. So, and that's what we're here to teach you. We're here to teach you all the little tricks of the trade, all the little things you need to learn in order to work on your sandcastles for the rest of your life. Um, there's only one thing that's gonna make you a better sandcastle builder, and that's practice. I know, it's what your mum says. Practice, practice. But uh, that's why some of the masters you see are so good. It's because they've been practicing all their lives. So there you go. There's no big secret to it. Oh, and we're having another bucket of sand. 
So I hope everybody's counting this. This is three buckets for a good sandcastle. And about four shovels a bucket, five shovels. And this is the time when you need to add your detailing. You want to think about your design. It's all very well piling up sand everywhere. But one of the reasons I like using the barrels, beside the fact that they save my back, is that I like to be able to think about how to get the design to go up in the air rather than across the beach. When you're building on the beach, you find so many castles that are long and low. And uh, we want to try, try and avoid long and low, okay? So, and if you alternate between towers, one of the things that gives you, it gives the, uh, the towers that you're trying to build time to dry and for the water to soak through. You can get a thing called slump on sandcastling, which is the same thing you get in concrete. And that's where um, the, the material will have so much water in it that will, it will actually collapse under its own weight. So you have to avoid that. So you have to give them time to dry. Obviously, you can do that in another way. Um, a super special way, obviously, in that you have to have your, your beverage ready, see? I have tried talking and drinking at the same time, but it doesn't work. It's amazing, my mouth's big enough, but you know. The other reason we use the barrels. I want to be comfy. I don't want to be scrabbling around on my knees. That's a kid's job. I'm not a kid anymore. So, as you can see, the tower is getting taller, but it's getting thinner. So, that's the secret. If you don't pile them pyramid shaped, they will not stand up. There are obvious exceptions to this rule, but it depends on the quality of the sand, which sand you're using. The sands all around the world always vary. They vary a lot. So, your job as you travel around the world for the next 50 years building sandcastles uh, is to test the sand. And there is an easy way to do that. Go to the beach, handful of damp sand, crush it. If it stays together, you can carve it. Easy. There are sands that will not do this. Uh, they hold a big competition in Hampton Beach. Oh, plug, plug. Uh, with my friend, Mr. Grady. And they have to bring in 250 tons of sand for the masters to work with, because you can't stack their sand on their beach. It won't stand up in any form at all. But there you go. So there we are. That's how we stack the sand. Nice little, lots of pancakes, staircases. We've got an archway. Ooh. So now we can start teaching. And I'm gonna ask for my lovely assistant, Jackie, to come to the stage. <laughs>